Welcome to Thrall Report. Today we're at Rower Flats. Uh, we're parking on the Bilkay Canyon side. Um, as you can see around me, uh, this trail right here shoots right up into Rower. Um, you can access all the trails from up there. This is kind of like a quieter, easier spot to park. It's where I like to park. Um, you don't have to deal with the huge crowds and uh, it's just more peaceful. Um, the only thing is you don't really get a warm up. The second you get on this trail, you're, you're right into it. Right into switchbacks and turns. And but that's what I love. I love it. So anyways, um, thanks for checking out this video. If you're curious about uh, riding at Rower, I'll show you where to get adventure passes, uh, where I park here, um, where I ride, a couple of trails that I like, and uh, just general information about the area. So I hope you like it. Been a little while since I made one of these videos. Uh, welcome to Thrall Report. My name is T.R. Katniss. Today we're going to Rower Flats. OHV area. I'm uh, going to show you guys where I park, where I ride, what trails I like, uh, and just some general information about the area. Uh, you have to have an adventure pass uh, that you can get at the mobile gas station off of Sand Canyon. Um, or there's a market that I'm going to go to, I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now, that has them. Um, and I'll show you guys that in the video here shortly. Thanks for watching. It's Halloween weekend, so I'm sure there's going to be a ton of guys heading out. I got two KTMs in the truck in front of me, which is, uh, I originally was going to go to Gorman and now I think I'm going to go to Brower Flats, uh, just to avoid, I don't know, lots of people. So we're getting off at Sand Canyon. <clears throat> if you need an adventure pass, uh, that mobile station right in front here, you make the right, and uh, you can go in there and go get an adventure pass. They have day passes. I think they're five bucks. You can buy a year pass. I think it's $30. And then for an extra five bucks, you get a second pass. And the advantage of that is if you have a plated bike like mine um, and you ride it in, not in the bed of the truck into rower, then it needs to have a pass. But if you have it in the bed of the truck, right, and drive your truck into rower, then only the truck has to have a pass. But I've always asked the rangers, like, how do you know if I have the truck or if, you know, I just rode the bike in and, you know, they said it's up to you, you know, if you're lying or not. But for the extra five bucks, I just get the pass for the truck and for the bike. Um, and I leave this sticker on my bike. So I just have it. Uh, no matter where I go. Other places where it's useful is um, in Fraser Park. You also have to have an adventure pass. So something to be aware of, uh, the Gorman Pass is separate. That is a state uh, pass, whereas I think the adventure pass is a federal pass. So just more ways for them to eke money out of you. And then if you have a, if you have a truck like mine, this uh, Chevron on the corner of Soledad Canyon and um, Sand Canyon has E85 can't see it down there it's like three something so cool spot to fill up with the 85 bill's place venture pass sold here all right i got the passes at bill's place and like i said this uh this first one is 30 dollars and it's an annual pass but for $5, you can get a second vehicle pass, which to me, I think it's worth it to spend the extra five bucks. Like I said, my truck needs one, but my plated um, KTM also needs one if you ride the KTM in without the truck. So for five bucks more, I just buy it, throw it on the bike, and I don't have to worry. Um, while I was in there, I guess he told me the Powerball's at uh, 800 million or something crazy, so I bought a ticket. So if we win, could be pretty cool. <laughs> You know, typically on these mornings, I don't like to eat a big breakfast. So usually I have my coffee uh, and I'll just eat like a small little cliff bar pack like this or a banana. Um, I know guys that eat full blown burrito breakfast, pancake breakfast, all that before they go riding. Uh, I can't do it. You know, um, if I'm at the track, then I can do it. If we're going to LACR or whatever, because I'm sitting around, we got a big long day. But here I literally get to where I'm gonna park, get my gear on, start riding. And I just, I can't do it with a full belly. So I don't know if you guys do it with a full belly, but leave me a comment. Do you load up in the food before you go riding or do you eat light and small? Let me know, thanks. 
One thing to uh, note <clears throat> on Rower Flats, some people call it Texas Canyon, uh, and that's because this canyon back here is called Texas Canyon that uh, shoots up in, um, I think, near the rock climbing area. I'll have to look it up. And uh, back over here in Belkay Canyon. So some people will say Texas Canyon. Some people say Rower Flats. I just call it Rower Flats because that's the official name. Um, but it's kind of like Gorman. You know, Gorman's not Gorman. It's Hungry Valley SVRA, State Vehicle Recreational Area. Um, so just a nickname, uh, Texas Canyon. We are now on Bokeh Canyon Road. Um, in the winter time, I've been on here when it's turned to ice with my buddy Chase and I was going a little too fast and got the truck sideways and uh, we both had a little bit of fun screaming on that one. But um, just to know in the winter time, this can get icy. Um, it can get flooded. Uh, and any time it rains about an inch or more, um, it seems like they close Roar Flats. They'll close this gate back here on Bokeh Canyon and they'll close the main gate. So if it's rained uh, or if it's rained recently, I would hop on the website. I'll pop a link below. Um, and they're pretty good at updating when it's open and when it's closed. So just something to be aware of. This road is windy. Um, I do see street bike guys back here hauling. So I try to go somewhat slow because sometimes they don't, you know, they come around the corner in my lane um, and I don't want those dudes hitting the front of my truck uh, ever. So anyways, um, <clears throat> something to be aware of. And when I say I don't want them hitting the front of the truck, it's not because I care about the truck. I could care less, you know, I just don't want anyone to get hurt. Um, that would just be horrendous. There used to be a bar that we would ride to, and uh, it was right here, but it burned down in a fire a couple years back. We'll have to look it up. But I have pictures of us. We used to sit out here, get hamburgers, get beer. Um, it was a cool spot to come down uh, off of rower and go eat at on the bikes, because bikes are played. We just go straight there and go get some lunch after, but uh, they haven't rebuilt anything. Um, I heard a fire department issue or some something along those lines that they won't issue a permit to rebuild it. Uh, and or it's really hard to get one um, just because of the fire danger back here. So it would be nice to have a bar back there because I like having a destination to go to. Um, just makes it fun, uh, you know, something to look forward to. But hopefully they build a new one soon. Total time since I left my house is now an hour and four minutes. Uh, but that includes my stop at Bill's place and um, talking to the guy about the lottery. Uh, and about the adventure passes and what have you. Um, so it says Gorman's an hour and 10 minutes from my house, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess they're the same distance. It feels like Rower's closer, but maybe by the time you drive through this canyon and park on the backside, maybe they're about the same amount of time. But um, the one nice thing is here, I usually can avoid traffic. Sometimes when you're coming home from Gorman, the five gets so messed up. I end up taking the 126 behind Magic Mountain uh, to come back to the Thousand Oaks area. And uh, that can take a while because you're going through the grade back there and then you're going through all the traffic lights. And so, I mean, in my mind, still the closest riding area is uh, Rower Flats. And here we are. Really wish they would uh, put in a porta potty because this is what happens when you don't have bathrooms. Um, people defecate <clears throat> right next to the watershed. <sighs> so I pay for my adventure pass, right? They got money. Put in a toilet. Welcome to Throttle Report. Today we're here at Rower Flats. We are parking on the Bokeh Canyon side. Uh, gonna show you guys where to get adventure passes, uh, what trails I like to ride, um, and how you get up there, which is uh, right behind me. So on this side, it's quieter. You don't really have to deal with a huge crowd. 
Um, the only thing is once you get on the trail, you're riding the switchbacks. You're riding to technical riding, which I love. It's great. But just so you know, there's no warm up on this side. So, but um, this is where I prefer to come. Um, you don't have to go through the bumpy road all the way up into Rower. Uh, when I got there, first thing you're greeted by is a, um, a security guy, you know, checking your spark rester and your permits. So uh, if you're like me, you just want to get in, get out, you know, uh, easy. The, this is where I park and this is where I go. So welcome to Thrill Report. Hope you guys liked today's video. Uh, like and subscribe uh, so I can keep making these videos. Thank you. They had to have come down on this trail because coming up this, there is no way that car got stuck there. Ugh. Ugh. 
let's not lose the bike. Hooah. What the? Um, Range Rover anyone? Damn. Oh, that's fiberglass. What the? Insurance job? Or what? My Range Rover can go off-road. Oh, somebody left a pair of snips here. Holy shit. Uh, Daddy, I crashed your car. I'm so sorry. I mean, the only way to get this thing out of here is with a helicopter. I'm surprised they're not uh, concerned about oil or gas contamination coming out of this thing, but who knows, man? Who knows? Crazy. I remember seeing this thing on YouTube, but I didn't realize where it actually was. I thought it was closer up to actual Bouquet Canyon Reservoir up over that way, but no, this is right off the backside of Roar Flats. I mean, look at look at the trail. And I mean, to continue on in a car thinking you were gonna make it all the way down there, I mean, that's just like insane. But who knows, insurance job, How one way to get out of payments, right? <laughs> Something Chase Barron would do. <sighs> Woo! Onward. Are we recording? We are.
Aiden area. to the top. usually like if I park down to the main staging area down there I ride this up this is a really fun trail to just jam up gives you a little bit of arm pump on the way but uh, today I'm kind of riding it backwards you know I could go down the fire road 
and jam up this but today because i'm exploring so many areas i'm just going to go down this and then rip up the fire road and i'll show you guys what that looks like so you can keep riding this trail um it goes all the way to those towers from there i haven't ridden it but it looks like you can do go down into palmdale and there's a couple offshoots that shoot down into uh the valley below so i haven't ridden it but maybe i need to get out there soon so let's head down So far, 6.6 .6 miles. Woo Usually what I do, I'll stand up on the foot pegs, <clears throat> push my butt further back, and uh, sometimes I'll just let the bike freewheel. But in situations like this, I'll sit down, make sure that I control the rear swing arm. I don't want it to pop out from under me in those rocks. But you just guide the front, weight the rear, easy peasy. Um, the only reason I slow up over the ridges is because Cars and trucks go on here side by sides. Uh, I tend to hug to the right because I imagine they would hug the right, but that's not always the case. So I just go easy over blind curves like that. <clears throat> like this one. In, sat down, waited the rear. Um, I am using both brakes, but more so the rear, like there you heard it lock up. Uh, the front, I just feather it. But I don't want the front to lock up because I need it to guide me. So I need that tire moving. So, and then I just hold in the clutch uh, while I'm doing that. Usually on these, I'm in third gear. You can't let it go and use engine braking, but not really a fan of uh, engine braking. Uh, two strokes don't even have engine braking. <laughs> Your random fact of the day. Uh, which line I choose to go in? I don't know. Sometimes the bike just sends me into a line. Sometimes I care. I'll control it and choose. Uh, usually I just try to avoid weird surfaces, if that makes sense. Like on the right there, all those rocks, nah. That little divot, nah. You know, picking the best line is just something that comes with time. Um, a lot of guys tend to look too far down when they first start riding. Uh, and you don't want to look down right at your front tire. You want to look ahead. I'm looking right at this bump. Now I'm looking over at that bump. And you want to pick. Like, where am I going to end up? Like, here on the sound hill. Like, that whole right side just looks so messed up. But here on the left, nice, clean line. But you need to look ahead because if you're not looking ahead, you can't plan where you're going to go. If you can't plan where you're going to go, you're going to end up somewhere you don't want to be. So, you got to train yourself to look up. And a bunch of people watching this are going to be like, dude, we get it. Like, I know, but, you know, there's a bunch of people that don't ride, that don't know. And then there's even people that ride, don't listen. So, lots of different riders, lots of different uh, techniques. Uh, no one is wrong. Um, as long as you ride at a decent pace, and you don't crash, knock on wood. Uh, my friends hate me because I never crash. Again, knock on wood. But, you know, I know where the edge is and I don't exceed it. You know, my buddy Chase, Chase is going to be like, dude, you're ripping on me all the time, but it's so easy. Uh, he just loves to take it all the way to the edge and when he finds it, uh, that's when he crashes. So, I know where that edge exists. Uh, I have to work. I have three kids. You know, I don't like being hurt, so I don't push it to that edge. I get 
close enough to it, make your heart race, get a little bit of adrenaline pumping, woohoo, just like that. Uh, give the rear a little bit too much brake and it went sideways. Um, but anyways, just like that, enough adrenaline, keep me excited, get me home at the end of the day. Uh, I do have a Scott steering stabilizer and in that situation, it does help straighten the bike out. So if you don't have one, definitely something to look into. Half the time when I do that, you know, I'm telling them I'm the last guy. Uh, the first guy gave me a fist bump, the last guy gave me the fist bump, so I don't even think they know what it means. Uh, Gorman and those guys are really pushing to try and get more people to know that, you know, hand signals save lives, but they just don't know. Uh, and I'm not saying that's necessarily on the state, but maybe as an industry as a whole. To just educate people better, you know? Uh, the great thing about side-by-sides, we got a lot of people out off-roading who normally wouldn't be, but in that same statement, you also have a bunch of people off-roading who normally wouldn't be, and they didn't grow up doing this. Uh, they don't know a lot about it. Uh, the dealership probably didn't tell them anything except to buy the most expensive one. And uh, they come out here and they just rip around and they just aren't aware of their surroundings as much as uh, somebody who grew up riding dirt bikes would be. Or even just rides a dirt bike in general. So it would be good people on side by sides to learn. Gorman instituted a new uh, flag policy which is nice you know be like Kismo you got a side by side you have to have a whip um, I would like to see side by side one way trails only um, in the future that would be good so anyway you're probably tired of hearing me talk and we are almost at the bottom down to the main area um, I will say that over the years, this has gotten really rutted. You know, uh, YouTube, social media, you know, I guess I'm my own poison, but uh, showing people these areas too also that they didn't know about. And uh, a bunch of them don't have dirt bikes, but they got that Tacoma or they got Daddy's Range Rover. And, come out here and they spin their tires and make these huge ruts. I mean, this is almost getting to the point where, good God, coming up this, uh, I don't even know if I'm going to want to go up that anymore. Um, it's getting that bad. Oh, there's a header. I mean, this is just like, the game used to be like this. It used to be pretty smooth on the way up, kind of rocky, but, and the rain here too ruts this stuff out just so bad. Woohoo! Anyways, that's the downhill. Uh, this is called the staging area number three. Um, if you drive your truck out here past the main staging area, it will take you a little bit longer. Um, but with my son, I usually come here because uh, there's this nice flat area over here. Um, there's not a lot of people doing donuts right next to my truck. Um, it's just like a safer environment for him to, uh, to learn. So. Staging area three, great for kids. Got a good little flat area. Not really too many canyons to have to worry about. Um, otherwise, this is not a beginner area at all, uh, in my mind. Um, you can take the fire road the other way up and turn around and come right back down, but I wouldn't bring a beginner here. Uh, this is the only section that has trees. Like I said, I bring my son here. Um, there, this is the flat area where I take him riding. Uh, like I said, it's called staging area number three. Um, there is a track at staging area number one, uh, which I have a video of on my TR Catney's YouTube channel. Um, I guess I probably will put a link for it down below. But anyways, that's another staging area. I think it's part of three. You got loading zone here. 
We've got a big ass truck. Campsites. I'm gonna take a little shortcut so I don't have to ride all the way up and around through there. Another guy riding a bike. And we'll head over to the main uh, station area. So the bike that I'm riding is a 2012 KTM 500 EXE. I love this bike. Um, it's got all the power, it's got all the comfort. I had the suspension done. I uh, built wheels on it, exhaust. Uh, I have the Euro wild mode for those of you that know what that means. You can't really get it anymore. I've got the switch right here, I can switch modes. Um, over here on the left, you can see the trails. Uh, this one's fun, I might hit this one, come out, and then hit the other trails this way. Just to show you guys. But anyways, I drive my truck down this path. Fire road, trail, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it goes all the way around into the main area, so I'm going to cut the video here. Actually, and then a shortcut and take this trail. Uh, it's nice to get a little side in our UTV trying to show them it's narrow, don't come down this way. Apparently I need a new clutch or I need to learn how to ride my bike. actually rent these uh, quads out. And like in the amount of time it takes me to go through there, I just park on the backside at Bouquet. But I have gotten to Bouquet Canyon Road before, and it's packed. There's so many people, uh, you can't even like fit your truck, you know. So um, I don't know, maybe 10 trucks will fit there. But <clears throat> there's a ton of trails in the middle to my right of where we're filming right now that go up and down and all around. 
Um, some technical, some not, some really rocky. Uh, years past, there was a, um, whatchamacallit, a, uh, I guess you call it Bobcat, like a trail machine that um, fell over the side. And I do have a video of that and I've never posted it, so maybe I'll go back and uh, throw that in this video so you guys can see. But, anyways, heading down to the main uh, section down here where um, there's rock climbers. Pretty good one-way trail and we're gonna hit that so one of my favorites here I don't know what the trail name is I guess we're gonna find out here shortly but I forgot to bring my extra battery with me so camera's going off and we will turn it on when we get to this trail I guess it's called Silver King so oh shoot it comes from up down there too I don't know if I've gone up that way Maybe I'll have to go that way one time. But anyways, it drops down in here in the creek, uh, rips around, fun little single track. So we're going to shoot this trail. Uh, trees up there, that's where I rode from. Up and over and then all the way down and over to here. <clears throat> Hope you guys like these videos. You know, when I first started riding, not to say, like, I mean, I keep saying that, not like it's just for people who just start riding. It's for anyone who's looking for you know, an area close to LA, uh, close to San Fernando Valley to go riding. I mean, this roller flats, this is our closest riding area. Um, and it's a good riding area, you know, it's not bad. Um, you can bring, like I said, um, the kids here for the little track and the little staging area. Um, you can bring some beginners and take this fire road uh, behind me that goes up the mountain um, and come back down that same way instead of coming down the rocky way. Um, and then you can bring technical riders here, you know, and take them up the gnarly single track and into the rocks uh, And they have fun. So I mean anyone can really come here and have a good time But like I said, you gotta get an adventure pass uh, like you saw that dude's out there checking at the main staging area um, <clears throat> You know, they're, they're gonna check for a spark arrester. Make sure you have a spark arrester um, Yeah, I think that's it. I don't know if you're allowed to bring alcohol here um Good question. I'll have to look that up. Well, let's get on the trail. Uh, so we're at 12 miles now. On the Silver King Trail. I guess the lower section, because that must be the upper section. But anyways, you guys, <clears throat> I came back here in fall of 2019 trying to shoot this with Chase. And uh, for Throttle Report, like the first episode, and never got it complete. So feels good to get out here and complete this for you guys. like and subscribe button more views more subs more videos cooler videos I don't know go crazy places maybe even get some chicks in the video Come back and rip it. 
had to fish a couple buddies off the side. <clears throat> Ugh. Light on. I tend to always ride with it. I mean, I got it. Why not ride with it on? Woohoo! So these things are straight and easy. Don't try and lock up your rear on it. it loves to slide. There's a big rock.
give her a new sign. She's like, well, there were two Jeeps back there, right? I don't know if they're done taking their Instagram photos or what. And even though they're not in my group, it's good to let somebody else know, hey, two other people down there, you know, that dude could back up his Jeep right in the middle of the trail to get a nice shot and uh, poor uh, Susan, we'll call her over there, to look like a girl, uh, crashes right into his Jeep and they're both unhappy. So, that's why I gave it to there. There's Bokeh Canyon Reservoir. Bokeh Reservoir, whatever you want to call it. Gosh, my nose just dried out on the inside. Alright, <clears throat> enough of that Instagram. <clears throat> Recording.
little foot, little stones there to let you know this is it. But Bouquet Trail is how you get back. So when you come up that far road, you go left and come down here, uh, maybe I don't know, a mile or so. But go right. Uh, uh, I'll shut up now. Down the trail. Remember, a Range Rover went down this. And I, I said I'd shut up, but here I'm talking. Uh, a Range Rover went down this and at this point still continued to keep going, right? I mean, just watch the video. And at, at no point did they decide to turn around. It blows my mind. How'd they have enough money to buy the Range Rover? Daddy. Sugar Daddy. Only fans? Who knows? I just want to ride my dirt bike. Woo! Close call on that one. That's why you gotta go slow. That guy was going too fast. Where there's one, there's more. Right? things that dude didn't even like slow down at all uh, uh, there's the car bye Range Rover just like on the lookout. why they put those little speed bumps in. I say they put these in to slow people down by either going down or coming up. Um, other people say it's to help people get up. Like if they get stuck in the section, it gives them a backstop to start their bike again. Um, other people say for trail erosion, pushes the water down on the right there. Uh, it could be for all the above. But if you know what these are for, I guess comment below. Or well, I'll ask the... Uh, I don't know who you would ask, call somebody. But they're there for a reason. So they do make some good little jumps. Just this trail is a little narrow and tight. Not a lot of room if you mess up. nobody he's got places to go he's just 
mad that I'm riding a KTM and he's riding a Honda. Anita would appreciate that. Burp, 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 burp. I mean, if it is only 10 o'clock, that clock is right. That can't be right. It's got to be 11. But anyways, regardless, you can do this hour drive here, you know, half hour, get ready. Uh, hour, hour and a half ride. Get your ride in, get home by lunchtime. You still have like a decent day at home. And usually when we're doing these day trips, that's what me and my buddies do. You know, we try to get up early, try to get out there, ride these trails and uh, either eat lunch together or make it home to eat lunch uh, with family. And uh, that allows your spouse, wife, whoever, to say, oh yeah, you can go riding next time because you're going to be home. So, happy wife, happy luck. There's a Range Rover up there. Yeah, that fell off the trail and people have picked it apart and... Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Is it a... Out here, shooting some Instagram pics of my bike. <clears throat> Tree just looks awesome right now. A little lens flare. <clears throat> Weather's perfect. A couple other guys <clears throat> out riding. They were here when I was here this morning. The uh, temperature is about perfect. And then uh, here's the entrance to the trail, so. Got my gear bag out, <clears throat> nice chest. Helmet and stuff, just getting cleaned up. Uh, shoot some videos and then uh, head on home. But thanks for watching. Well, <clears throat> just made it back to the truck. Uh, after a day up riding rower, uh, to be honest, this is my first time riding solo. I've never ridden solo before. And usually I tell people not to ride solo in case something happens. But Rower and Gorman, <clears throat> there's so many people here. This new iPhone 14 Pro has got crash detection in the uh, watch. Um, it's also got satellite SOS, uh, which is kind of cool. And Apple was worried about that. They're like, oh, people are going to do more adventurous stuff because we put this feature in. Maybe so, but, you know, <clears throat> the problem is make these videos... Uh, to get the time, you know, to do it and get somebody to come with me and film it and wait for them and watch them, you know, I, I don't want to say babysitting, but like, you know, it just, it requires a lot more effort than if I just come by myself and knock these videos out. So here I am, did it by myself. Uh, I didn't want to say it was a solo trip in the beginning uh, until I was done, um, just because I'm kind of superstitious like that. But uh, first successful trip, it was great. Um, rode at my own pace. <clears throat> I talked to you guys on the camera way too much, but uh, I kind of felt like a tour guide on this first video, and uh, hopefully it turns out cool. Hopefully you guys like it. So check it out. <clears throat> Support our shop, MotorcycleSport.com. Uh, help pay uh, gas, a uh, cost to run these videos, you know. Um, take care of that bike over there, uh, this truck, this gear, all this stuff. So any purchase you guys make at the shop, uh, it, it goes to me directly. Um, helps us, uh, helps my family, um, it helps keep me doing the things that I love. So check it out, Motorcycle Sport. Um, and this channel that we're on right now is Throttle Report. So I have Throttle Report. Uh, it's kind of like a independent <clears throat> where to ride, how to ride review kind of site that I was trying to do with my friends. And then I have Motorcycle Sport, which is um, my shop. So I have a Throttle Report channel, reviews, cars, that kind of stuff. Motorcycle Sport, which is just moto strictly, you know, um, products, product reviews, uh, Red Bull Straight Rhythm, over the Pala Raceway, uh, Anaheim, all that stuff. Excuse me, I got hiccups. And then I have TR Catney's YouTube channel, which is just my personal one that I've had for 13 years now and just kind of post, I don't know, random stuff. So three different channels, Throttle Report, Motorcycle Sport, TR Catney's. And same with the Instagram. So, and it's all me. So I got a lot of stuff to keep up with, but uh, hopefully it's enough to keep you guys entertained and, um, Come back for more and trying to answer all you guys' questions. So check it out. Thank you. Of course, I go riding, go through trails, speed, technical, stop to take a picture of my bike for Instagram, and it falls over. 
and destroyed my perfectly, basically new grip. And my throttle tube, the things I put my bike through for the sake of a photo. So now I need two grips. I mean, look at these grips, they're like brand new. They were brand new. Can't even, can't even turn it. It's fun. Jeff, fix my bike. Well, fun riding for today, I have to say, is uh, more fun than I thought riding solo. It was kind of peaceful. Kind of just going at my own pace, doing my own thing, uh, riding my bike, just enjoying the scenery. I'm um, appreciating rower flats. So anyways, thanks for watching this episode of Throttle Report. Uh, my throttle tube's broken on the other side. Make a video, Jeff fixing it really quick. Uh, just making videos, everything that I'm doing. So hope you guys like it, like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Oh, I'll film that rower. It won't be that busy. Car. 10 seconds later, another car. <sighs> well, hope you had fun, bike. Till next time. That tip over got my bike good. <sighs> but this is the original throttle tube. It's like, I don't know, 10 years old now. So I guess that plastic's super brittle. Uh, people also don't believe me. These are my original levers, um, brake and clutch, and the original handguards. So.